Hello everyone, in this lecture we are just going to interface push buttons with our microcontroller STM32F446RE with the help of STM32 Cube MX. Let's get started. Let's configure our microcontroller as per our requirement. Open the STM32 CubeMX software. Now click on File and then click New Project. Now you will get a tab where you can select the microcontroller as per your requirement. Now here you can see there is a tab named Board Selector. So this tab is used for selecting the board that is available in the STM series microcontroller. So in my case I am using Nucleo F446RE development board. So you can find these kinds of board over here. But if you are using a custom made board as per your requirement you just want to select the MCU right over here. Click on the MCU selector tab and here you just want to type in the microcontroller name that you are using. In my case I am just going to use STM32F446RE. So I am just going to select the microcontroller as if I am going to use a custom made board but I am using the Nucleo F446RE development board. So double click on this microcontroller name to select the microcontroller. So here you can see you will get the microcontroller with all the pins uninitialized. So the first configuration that you want to do is you just want to select the clock frequency for the microcontroller. So by default you can see this is the clock tree of the microcontroller and by default the system clock is set to be 16 megahertz. So you can set up to a maximum clock frequency of 180 megahertz to this microcontroller using the PLL clock. You need not do anything, you just want to type in the clock frequency over here. For example, if I want to run the microcontroller at 180 megahertz, just type in 180 megahertz and click on enter. So you can see the clock frequency has been shifted to 180 megahertz. So that's all about the clock configuration of the microcontroller. Now come to the pinouts and configuration tab. Now let's try to configure the pin nodes as per our requirement. And I am not going to use any external push buttons or LEDs now. I am just going to use the onboard user button and LED that is available in my Nucleo development board. That is in my Nucleo F446RE development board. So before configuring my inputs and outputs in my microcontroller, I just want to find out to which pin the user button that is available in my development board as well as the LED in my development board is connected. So that can be found out by using the schematic diagram of Nucleo F446RE development board. So this is the schematic. The link for this document is provided in the description of this video. You can download it directly. So you can see from the schematic we can get to know that the user button that is the blue button in my development board is connected to the PC13 of my microcontroller that is nothing but GPIOC pin number 13 and this push button is configured in pull up logic you can see resistor is connected to the power supply and that end is connected to the GPIO of the microcontroller and other end of the push button is connected to ground that means Whenever I press this button, I will get a low signal in my microcontroller and when I release this button, I will get a high signal. So this is the pull-up logic as we discussed in the previous lecture. I have explained you about pull-up and pull-down logic and it's working in the previous lecture. And we know from the previous lecture of LED blink, the onboard LED in my development board, that is nothing but this LD2 is connected to the PA5 pin of the microcontroller. So I am just going to configure this PA5 pin as output and this PC13 pin as input. 
so you can see this is the PA5 for configuring this pin as output just left click on this and I am just going to configure this pin as output and you can find here the PC13 I just want to configure this pin as input right click on this and select GPIO input so that's it we have configured the LED pin as output and the button pin as input. So that's all about the configuration. We have configured the LED pin that is PA5 as output and the user button pin that is PC13 as input. So now our logic is simple. I am just going to turn on this LED whenever the push button is pressed and I am going to turn off the LED whenever the push button is released. So this is the logic I am going to build. Now click on this project manager tab and then give a name for the project. Type the name over here in the project name and then select the IDE or toolchain to MDK ARM v5 and go to the code generator tab and select this radio button. Copy only the necessary library files and that's it about the configuration part. Just click on this generate code button in the top right corner of the window to generate the code. You can see the code is being generated by the Cubamax. Click on open folder. Go inside the MDK arm and open the keel file over here so this is the project file now our project has been successfully created by cubamax click on this plus icon and inside the application or user you will find the main.c file so this is the cubamax generated software initialization software the clock configuration and the GPIO initialization and now as I said the logic is simple whenever the button is pressed I just want to turn on the LED and whenever the button is released I just want to turn off the LED so I am just going to use a variable button state equal to so I just want to declare this variable over here I am doing it inside the main function uint8 underscore t so this is the 8 bit variable integer variable so you, you just remember that the logic will be always written inside the while of 1 which is the infinite loop so we just want our logic to happen again and again until the microcontroller is stopped so that is why we will write all our logic inside the while of 1 and let's get into the code uh, button state equal to we are just going to use the hal gpio read pin function for reading the state of the button or the input pin so the first parameter for this read pin function is gpio port as we saw from the schematic the push button is connected to pc13 and we configured that pin as input right so we are just going to give GPIO C and the second parameter is nothing but the GPIO pin number. So we know that GPIO pin number is nothing but GPIO underscore pin underscore 13. So now the state of the input pin PC 13 that is GPIO C 13th pin will be stored in the variable button state. So if it is high. 1 will be stored in the button state variable and if it is low 0 will be stored in the button state variable so we know that whenever the button is pressed we will receive a 0 in the gpio pin so we will get a 0 over here in the button state variable so whenever the button is pressed we will get a 0 in the button state variable so in that moment i just want to turn on the led connector to pa5 so if button state equal to equal to 0 that means when the button is pressed I just want to turn on the LED. So for that I am just going to use the same library that is hal gpio 
right pin I just want to turn on the GPIO A pin 5 GPIO underscore pin underscore 5 and third parameter is nothing but we know that pin set so this will turn on the PA5 LED so whenever the button state variable is 0 that is whenever the push button is pressed I will turn on the PA5 LED if it is not 0 or else I will turn off the same LED that is nothing but I am just going to give GPIO pin reset to the same function so that's all about the logic you can see at the first instance I am just continuously reading the state of the input pin using the variable button state so if the button is pressed I will get a zero in the button state variable as the button is configured in pull up logic and when the button state variable is zero the PA5 LED or the onboard LED connected to PA5 will be lighted up and when the button is released I will get a 1 over here in the button state variable so this if condition will be failed and this else part will be executed that is nothing but the LED will be turned off so this is the logic just compile the code using the button over here Once compiled, connect your nuclear board to the PC USB port through USB cable and then click on this download icon over here to download the flash to the microcontroller. You can see the flash has been successfully downloaded to the microcontroller. So now in our development board, to start the program, press the reset button. Then this blue color button is the user button and when we press this button our LED must be turned on and when we release this button our LED must be turned off as you can see. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.